Hey, this is Tim Burnett, and this is the Solo Hunter Podcast. Hunt good, eat good, survive and thrive. I'm talking hunting, business, and life with self-sufficient, like-minded individuals. This is episode number five, Joel Pilcher, building the brand of one. You gotta have a story. Oh, forget the story. Everybody's doing something. We'll do nothing. They say, what's your show about? I say nothing. There you go. It's about nothing. I think you may have something here. So for this episode, I'm actually on a hunt in Utah, and I took a little time out of out of the week to head back to Erda, do a little business, and do a, do a few things with Joel Pilcher, who is my brand manager. Joel is the one responsible for designing the logo, and he now does a lot of the marketing and um, creative assets for Solo Hunter as far as the newsletter and those types of things. So I wanted to really sit down with Joel and pick his brain on the branding side because he's got a lot of experience in that, both within the industry and outside of the industry. He's also an amazing wildlife artist. We've done a few um, art giveaways on, on the Instagram page. He does commissioned art. He's done some awesome stuff from Yoli Freak and a few others. His Instagram handle is at Joel Pilch. Um, it's Trophy Mountain Art. His website, I believe, is trophymountainart.com. You can check out his artwork or purchase some uh, if you want to show some support to Joel. Some of his art is also available at solohunter.com. Really just an interesting guy. He's responsible for designing all of our apparel, t-shirts, hats, and everything like that. So I really just wanted to get him on the show, and especially when I'm in his neck of the woods. So hope you enjoy this conversation between Joel and I. We kind of reveal quite a bit about my brand and background as well as his background and, and brand building experience. You ready for this? Yeah, sure. All right. That's what I have to. I always think to myself on like when I'm doing these sketches and stuff. It's like I don't have to. I don't have to show it if I don't want no. to. <laughs> That's the thing that I like. It relieves all the pressure. Yeah. That's one thing that I don't think a lot of people realize is is I have the ability to edit myself and put my best self or the self that I want out there. Mm -hmm. I can put out there. Mm -hmm. And that's the advantage of you know, post-production or edited production and not something that's live, like a live show or whatever else. So. Yeah. Anyway, so we're sitting here with uh, Mr. Oh, Joel, we're recording now. Joel Rodney Pilcher. What's your middle name? Paul. Joe Pilcher. Huh? <laughs> Joel Paul. <laughs> Joe Paul Pilcher. Yep. Joel has become a good friend of mine and um, brand new brand manager for Solo Hunter since about... I guess technically for the last couple of years, but really not on board until October. Yeah, come, come close to one year officially. Yep. So for those of you that don't know who Joel is or what Joel is, Joel has been in the background of Solo Hunter for quite a while. Um, pro coming up on two or three years um, with the creation of the new logo, um, with the rebrand of the, the one of many reband brands of Solo Hunter. <laughs> um, trying to keep me on a on a straight and everything bring a little but, consistency yeah yeah <laughs> but um the thing that i like about joel and was not only the work that he had done within the industry but um what he kind of was willing to open up and share a vision with solo hunter early on when we when we first met when you were were somewhere else so um joel why don't you tell us a little bit tell me a little bit about yourself and kind of your background and where you came from how far back do you want me to go? You can go back as far as you want. This is my show. So, <laughs> Yeah, so I love, even when I was a little kid, I loved drawing, but I always got really frustrated. And, and maybe those that have tried to, you know, attempted to draw have, have felt the same frustration. I couldn't get what was in my head to go down on paper. Um, but I was fortunate to have uh, parents that were very supportive of my, you know, my talents and my interests. And I still remember my mom seeing the frustration I had, and she went out and, she bought some uh, He-Man tracing books. And I got those tracing books and I go through and trace, trace the images of He-Man and different characters. And I think that helped a lot because it kind of trained my, my hand to do what my mind saw or what, my, you know, what I'd see. And um, so that, that was kind of the beginning of it for me. Um, I took art classes through you know, through school, element or uh, middle school and uh, high school, even attended a couple extracurricular up at uh, the University of Utah and, and different things like that. But um, that's you know that's where it all kind of started. I worked for my dad for a long time. He's a general contractor, so I was on the on the job site doing you know physical labor, 
for a long time. I actually started when I was about 11 or 12 years old working on the job site and in over the next 10 years, I, I realized that I would really rather be an artist than, mm -hmm. than a construction worker. <laughs> artist, <laughs> man. You think a construction worker's living is hard. An artist, yeah. that's got to be a tough living. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's, there's the, the saying, starving artist. Yeah. And, yeah, we experienced a little bit of that. And then you we rarely were, see a fat artist? Rarely, yeah. We, we've kind of moved from that starving artist stage into what I now call a surviving artist. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> but it's been good. Um, I got my first job as an artist. You know, I was working, working through with my dad, and then one day I just decided I was about twenty-one, I think. Decided, you know what, this is it's time for me to go and, and you know chase my dreams and yeah. do what I really want to do. So I got my first job as a professional artist with a company called Del Sol, hmm. and uh, they do T-shirts, lots of T-shirts. They do the color-changing T-shirts you out in the sun, and the ink is UV reactive, so the color appears. Hmm. Um, and that was good. It was a really good experience. A lot of my background is in. I mean, that's where kind of where I started was T-shirt designing. Is that when the art kind of the drawing? morphed into the graphic design yeah. and more on the digital side. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons Delsol hired me is because I had that the hand drawing, the illustration capabilities that I could I could freehand designs and then transfer them to digital and create the designs in, in the different softwares hmm. to you know, to then be output into film and screens and hmm. and printed on shirts. Cool. Yeah. So you guys have probably there's Probably everybody's seen your work that didn't really even know that you, it was your work or, or yeah. your hand in cer certain projects. There's stuff that I didn't know early on either. It was like, oh, that was you did that. That's awesome, you know. So yeah, after after I worked for Del Sol for a couple of years and then um, I I needed more. You know, I wanted more, and I um, so I left and, and kind of went on my own at that time and started doing freelance work and I um, got was contacted by a company out of Seattle that. They just do tons and tons of t-shirt designs. So I was, I'd do hundreds of designs for them a year, mm. just constantly kicking out designs. And it was really fun because they'd sell to Walmart and Kohl's and Macy's, all the big department stores. And it was fun to be able to go into those stores and walk through and, and see my designs yeah. sitting on the shelves and on the racks and stuff. Huh. Um, Not in the hunting. This is just, this is mm -hmm. it was just totally non-endemic. Yeah. 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 But um, I've always had... I've always had my roots in the hunting industry. I've always loved drawing wildlife. That, that was when I was a kid. That was my dream: was to be a become a wildlife artist. Um, and it, it it was harder back then because of limitations of technology and just gaining exposure as a fine artist. And that's why I kind of went the route of graphic artist. It was there was more opportunity. That and was, that's where the that's where the industry was going. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah, where things have kind of changed, and I mean, we can talk about that in a little bit, but yeah, technology has advanced so far that it's made it possible now, much more possible to be successful as a fine artist mm -hmm. with social media and the different avenues for gaining exposure for your work and, and things like that. Yeah, it's just made e-commerce for any brand influencer representative product, anything, it's just made it that much mm -hmm. better. You know, still a different, difficult marketing climate, but it's, can you imagine it without social media, yeah. without the internet or without those things? I mean, you're, you're, you're in coffee shops on the corner trying to sell your, your chalkboard yeah, art. Art shows. Yeah. We, and we did, my wife and I, bless her heart, you know, she, she stood behind me the whole time and, you know, been very supportive and it's been, it hasn't been easy. We've had some really tough times and, but, and, you know, doing some of the art shows, we travel, mainly stuck to Utah, I travel around Utah doing different art shows, selling some of some of my fine art um, early on, before social media, before the internet was really um, something that you could utilize as an artist, and it was it was difficult, but uh, but the graphic side of it has always been strong for me. Um, after when I was doing freelance, I was working at, for that company out of Seattle, and then I got a contact with um, with Easton Archery, and ended up doing a whole bunch of graphic work for them. Um, designing every, from, everything from T-shirts to arrow labels to marketing materials, catalogs and brochures and ads and all that kind of stuff, and that was that was a lot of fun. And um, 
did did a lot of uh, a lot of work for a lot of other companies as well. T a hmm. lot of t-shirt designs. Yeah. Um, worked with a guy named Peter Miller, and he we kind of kind of partnered up and worked together and and made a lot of contacts and did a lot of business in the hunting industry. Yep. And Peter and his company, they do all of our hats and shirts mm -hmm. and apparel yeah. and everything. So. Yeah. So it was. I mean, worked for Vortex Optics and Hoyt and. See now you're throwing out names dozens. that people are gonna recognize. Yeah, yeah. So after, you know, after I started doing more and more work for these hunting companies, um, I, I was working from home on my own, um, just doing freelance work, and I kind of got to the point where I felt like I, I, I kind of hit a, a ceiling with my my abilities and the time that I had, the money that I could make, kind of maxed out because there's only so many hours in the day, you know. So. Working through Easton, I was and and some of the other companies, I was looking for more opportunity, and um, I ended up having the chance to partner with a couple other guys and create a, a design firm. And doing that was it was a really good experience for me. I got to kind of break out of the mold or the the constraints that I was in working on my own, and, and start working with a team of of creatives, team of designers, um, and I was I was working with them, managing the team, and it, it was awesome. We had, we had a really good team of, of creative people that we could bounce ideas off of, and um, just, it kind of raised the, the level of the quality for all of us of, of what we were creating. And that, that company was called Zulu 6, and that, we did that for a very short time because another opportunity came along to start a, a company called Mountain Ops. And um, that's, that's where, our relationship uh -huh. began. So I was the kind of creative director and brand manager at Mountain Ops, and I was introduced to you, and we were working together and, and doing stuff there, and we hit it off from yeah. the beginning. I think our, our personalities are, are very similar. Yeah, I remember, I remember Jordan saying that meeting me was like meeting Joel's twin. <laughs> <laughs> Not, you know, physically and, and, and everything, and he's like, when Joel speaks, take, I, I think take was, heed. I think that was a compliment. Uh, I, I took it as a compliment. I, th I think it was a compliment I hope for that you. Wasn't I don't an know. <laughs> no, but like we were uh, very similar, and even as I think I remember some of the earlier marketing conversations that we had. You know, um, it was really easy to watch you just kind of sit back with your arms crossed and just listening and absorbing everything in. And then when you spoke, you spoke very deliberately, and it made sense. It was none of the excitable, you know, we're going to do this, 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 blah, 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 let's, let's make this happen, let's, and all this just throwing stuff against the wall and seeing what sticks, you just really kind of absorbed everything and then we're like, this is how I see it, you know, yeah. and so that's, that's where we are very different, but that's where now, that's I think where we balance each other out pretty well, so. Yeah. Yeah, um, my dad always told me that uh, God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, better off listening more and, and talking less. And <laughs> I have to remember that sometimes. Try to follow that as much as I can. <laughs> yeah, I don't even remember who it was that told me this. He's like, when you're, when you're uh, in a conversation or you meet somebody new, somebody influential or whatever, you don't say a word, you just listen, because now not only do you know what you know, but now you know what he knows, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I just kind of kind of learned a lot from that to where I like to absorb information, but I get to the point where I'll even, I'll even dig and ask more questions, you know, just so that I can learn more, some of it for personal reasons and some of it, you know, for selfish reasons, because I want to know what they know, but then also some of it, a little bit of it out of curiosity. You know? <laughs> I have very little curiosity. It's more, I want to know what you know. Kind yeah, of thing, so. and then I always, I've always liked the saying that it's, it's better to keep your mouth shut and be thought an idiot than to open it and remove all doubt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, that, I mean, that's where we met, and that's where, that's where I had the opportunity to create the, the S icon for Solo Hunter, the new logo, and yep. kind of started down that path. Yeah, and at that time, um, if you'd seen much of Solo Hunter before, you've seen a lot of different logo renditions, you know, and all those were those, those that I had created with my, I have no graphic design skills, no nothing, and I just created and nothing ever really felt right. And even, it's kind of funny, even after Joel created the, S, the Solo Hunter icon, 
like I even went back. I'm like, Joel, can we do something with the solo man or whatever and do a different variation because the hunting market needs antlers and everybody wants to see horns. And, and you were very adamant. You're like, let's stick to the icon and let's design around it. You know, let's do things around it for t-shirts or, or whatever there might be. And so it took me some warming up to have just an icon, mm -hmm. you know, and even now with the hats, I really like the boxed icon and some people like just the S or whatever, but um, I had to kind of step back and let you really take hold of that and yeah. uh, push me in the right direction. And even now I'm kind of like, eh, everybody likes antlers, everybody likes antlers, but yeah, it is what it is. And that, I mean, that's, that's understandable. That's, you know, that's part, part of the, the hunting industry, but it's, it's also, um, kind of the problem with it is everybody likes antlers so everybody has antlers mm -hmm. so you gotta you gotta set yourself apart a little bit yeah be, be unique and and then stay consistent but um that's one thing I, I really like doing is bringing a little bit of uniqueness to the hunting industry while still you know designing around that and and keeping it trendy i guess with what everybody what everybody mm -hmm. wants and expects yeah kind of you know, bringing, bringing a little bit of unique to it, to a brand as well. Yeah. And I've always tried to, I've always kind of treated the brand as the stepchild where it's like, I mean, I was late coming into hat, doing hats and shirts. I was mm -hmm. years into it before I designed the first hat. So I was like, no, that's the first thing everybody always does. They design hats and shirts yeah. and then they realize that it's not easy and they fail and they get frustrated and they move on to something else. And, and so you see all these startup brands coming and going, coming and going. And even, you know, now that it's, it's more than ever, of brands coming and going and some of them stick um but like i always have felt like oh, there's no value to a brand you know there's no value really to a logo or me putting my name or logo on a product until i actually did it you know mm -hmm. and then that's when the eyes my eyes opened where it's like okay people not only like the content that you're putting out there or you know or there's an audience that likes the content that you're putting out there in the entertainment but that audience also has a hunger to represent that and to to brand themselves mm -hmm. in the same way because I'm not doing anything different than a lot of people out there are doing themselves. And it feels great to be part, have the camaraderie and be not part of a team, but kind of part of a team, you know, where it's like, yeah. I'm a solo hunter, you're a solo hunter, you're a solo hunter. Yeah, and that's, so. I mean, that's exactly why people crave it that's why they love brands because when, when a guy like you puts out the quality content and they see that it just it it motivates them and, and makes them want to be a part of it because mm -hmm. it looks so fun and, and and so cool and just so so providing that that brand for them to to take home you know and, and wear and and feel a part of what you're doing mm -hmm. i mean it's awesome it it, it just creates a it creates an emotional connection for them right. with with who you are and what you're doing and it's it's good for everybody because if we're not going to emotionally connect and if we're not going to associate ourselves and and relate as solo hunters what are we going to relate as yeah. and then we're all going to be part of the brotherhood and we're going to be part of the bone collector or we're going to be you know something everybody right. everybody people like to be a part of something yeah. Um, I like to be a part of something. I like to be a part of something that um, I have interest in, but also something that I believe in and have passion about, you know, whether that's sports or anything else. That's why we're all such avid you know, football fans or basketball fans or whatever else. We feel a part of that team. That's my team. The Bears, that's mine. Since 1984, that's my team, you know. And I think that what you've been able to help educate me on on the branding side is, is we're just giving somebody, we're just giving everyone something to latch onto, you know, something to feel a part of Solo Hunter, even if they're not going to be on the TV show or, or, um, you know, yeah, any of those things. It's like, that's my team. Solo Hunter's my team or Muley Freak is my team or Mountain Ops is my team or whoever, Vortex is my team. Yeah. Um, cause people and specifically within the hunting industry, I feel like are extremely brand loyal. You yeah, know, almost to the point of animosity. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's, I mean, I, I love, I love artwork. I love drawing, you know, and I, I love designing and the graphics and making something look really cool. But something over the last few years, I've really kind of fallen in love with branding and creating that, 
that potential bond between a person, a consumer, the audience, and the brand, and just giving, you know, helping them find that connection and giving them reason, even more reason, to want to be a part of it. It's just, mm -hmm. it's so much fun, so much fun. Oh. It's it's uh, extremely gratifying for me, like satisfying, mm -hmm. you know, and and I probably give more stuff away than anybody, more hats and shirts, because if somebody's like, hey, do you got any stickers or decals on Instagram? I'm like, then what's your address, you know? Because, like, I feel I still have that, that you know, freshman excitement where it's like, hey, they like my stuff, you know? Yeah. And then it's, which is crazy, because I've been doing Solo Hunter now, we're filming season nine, you know? I mean, I've been in it for a long time, and and was with some other shows before that. So you would think that some of that excitement would wear off, but it really hasn't, you know? I, I love it when somebody takes the time and say, man, I love what you do. Um, do you got any hats or you got a shirt or yeah. I just, I just you're, or a lady will send me a, a letter that says, um, my husband's shirt tore in the, in the collar, you know, Solo Harner's his favorite brand. Is there any way we can get a discount on another shirt or whatever? I'm like, here, take two, you know? Yeah. Like, somebody that takes the time to do that, um, it means a lot to me. And there may be other brands and shows that get that just as much or more, but I don't care. This is, this is what I know and what I, what I like about it. And so by creating, by having this community come together and now under the brand that you've helped create, have something to relate to, it just fuels my fire mm -hmm. even that much more to where it's like, man, I don't care if anybody pays full price for a hat or whatever if, if they're wearing my representing my brand that's that's the value to me you know in a lot of ways so. yeah yeah that's what, I mean that's I believe that's why one of the reasons you've been so successful is because you're very and one of the reasons I'm excited to to work with you and have always enjoyed working with you is because you're very genuine thank that, you that makes a big difference with a brand it makes it makes my job as a, you know, for branding and marketing and messaging and all that makes it so much easier for me because it's, I mean, to, to create that connection mm -hmm. and that bond between a brand and an audience is just so much easier when the, the guy behind the brand is genuine. You remember um, early on when we first, like, because I've always struggled with, because I feel like I sc screwed up in a lot of ways because early on, like, the brand was me or Remy, you know, mm -hmm. it, it was, it was just a person. There was no brand. It was just, Hey, solo hunter is these guys. This is what they do. Um, and it was like, it's, it's really difficult to be a self promoter and to constantly be talking about yourself. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the reasons why, when we had met, that I really wanted to create something that was more broad, you know, maybe something a little more lifestyle oriented, something not specifically hunting, but not out of hunting that just really represented what I like in self-reliance, individuality, doing stuff on your own. But I kept having this nagging feeling that, and just not knowing is like, are people just following me and what, and Remy and what we're doing? Or are they really interested in, in the brand? And, and at one point I remember saying, well, let's, I wanna do whatever it takes to pull myself out of the brand. So that it's just grow the brand, let it be what it is. So that if Tim Burnett's not there one day, it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. And then there's another part of it that's like, but we are kind of the brand too, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. in a lot of ways. So I've struggled with that and I still do to this day of, of really knowing what that balance is, you know, because yeah. people follow people. It's, it's, I don't know. Yeah. And that's something, you, you know, in the position I'm in, I've, I've worked with a lot of different companies and that's something I, I stress to them. You have to have a balance. Because there's always there's always the benefit in having a you know an individual promoting the brand, but then you've you've got to you've also got to make the brand about the audience, about mm -hmm. your your followers and the people who care. Because if if you don't, if it's all about you, then they lose interest and they're just like this is just all about Tim. Right, right. But if you can if you can kind of transcend that, still still utilize that aspect. You know, with with promoting your brand, because people do. I mean, people like you, and they want to watch you. They want to see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But but that's one thing I, I've I've tried to help other brands do, and, and and help you is with is turn turn the focus, at least partially, to the audience and and help them understand that that you do legitimately care about them, and you want mm -hmm. them to to follow and to be a part of what you're doing. And it you know it, it's beneficial to do that, but it's also so much more fun. 
yeah. when you do that and yeah. have that interaction with the with the audience and, and help them be a part of what you're doing. Yeah, I don't remember if it was you or, or who it was that I had the conversation with that it was like, and then they, they put it bluntly. I don't remember if it was you or who it was. Um, they're like, Tim, do you want to be a celebrity in the industry or do you want to just create your brand, you know, and grow, grow something beyond yourself? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't want to be a celebrity. <laughs> At one time I thought I did. Yeah, but I'm like, I'm yeah. not a celebrity guy. I'm moderately handsome, but not devastatingly <laughs> good looking. You know, I mean, moderately adventurous, but not Bear Grylls level, you right. know. Um, and just knowing my history and seeing the evolution of what Solo Hunter was, it's like, I'm not, I'm not going to be a celebrity. You know, if I go down the celebrity route, I'm going to be sorely disappointed. For one, I can't handle public pressure. I mean, I left the Hunt Expo early because I had an anxiety attack. You know? It's like... <laughs> I can't deal with that, and it doesn't make me happy, you yeah. know? And I look at other celebrities, I'm like, well, I'm doing the same things that the Cam Haynes or Remy Warren or Eva Shock or some of these other people that, that I work with on a sponsor side on some similar sponsors, and it's like, that's not me. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that type. I'm not that personality type. Right. I don't crave that type of attention, even though in years past with Solo Hunter, I've like, I've played that role. I've played back and forth where it's mm -hmm. like, yep, I'm the host of the show. I'm the, I'm the star. I'm the creator. I'm the whatever. And then I'm just the editor. You know, I'm just, just this or just the brand guy. And so I feel like in the last couple of years, like, and with your help and others' help, I really feel like I've settled into the role that I want to be in. Yeah. And yeah. that's the role of, I love product development and I love, uh, I love creation. I love content creation, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I think that with the building of the brand, I've been able to do that, you know, to where I can sit back and just run the business and go on hunts, you know, yeah. so. Yeah, I feel the same. And that's, you know, I, I feel like we've been working hard to find that balance mm -hmm. between, you know, the, the self-promotion and, you know, promoting, you know, using your personality to promote and, and building the brand side of it, you yeah. know. You know the audience involvement, and so I think we're we're getting there for sure, and it's exciting to see. And yeah. I think you know we'll be able to perfect it as we move forward. I think we need one or two more of each of us. Wouldn't those you think? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Always, <laughs> it'd be nice, you know. And what's cool is is on the on the the uh, you know the the fan side of things or whatever that like we have the Solo Nation. I I started the Solo Nation years ago. I was like, all right, I'm gonna create this club and it's going to be all this you know and we're going to have contributors and some of the episodes had the solo nation had solo viewer segments in mm -hmm. them and it just didn't flow for the content side of things and i'm like well we'll just create this playlist on youtube and have this solo nation video list which we had for a long time of people contributing videos and just feeling a part of it and then it's like all right now social media is hitting big let's do the solo stories and then you see a lot of other brands pick up on the, the stories type of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, Benelli does it and a lot of these others of, of having these stories and and just sharing people's content on social media. You know, I mean, we've been able to build a platform and I, I love nothing more than just have somebody send me a photo or tag me in a photo. They're wearing a hat or using a rifle cover or whatever it is. Like, I love sharing that kind of stuff. And then I'll get messages from people, oh, you're running out of your own content, huh? You gotta share other people's stuff to grow your page. Yeah. And it's like, no, that really was the last thing on my mind. The first thing on my mind was that dude's wearing my hat. And he just killed a, you know, a Dallas sheep in Alaska and he's stoked on it. Yeah. You know? That's that's what I like. So that's you know yeah, I feel like that's where we are. People with that, you know, that type of mentality just don't understand brand building. Yeah. Most and, of it is you know, friends that are just jabbing me, you yeah. know, but still. No, because I mean that's what a good brand does. It it involves the audience. And I think that's that's where some of it comes into play is, is the one specific guy, you know what I'm talking about, Steve. You know it. But <laughs> one specific guy is like yeah, you just run out of your own content and, and I, I did. I I sent message back, I said, You don't get it. He's like, oh, guess I don't, you know, but I think it's because a lot of us at certain points of time in our lives, we want to be the popular guy, you know, mm -hmm. you want to be the big man on campus. You want to be the celebrity. You want people to recognize you for your accomplishments. You want to try You want to prove yourself. And the, the minute you keep trying to prove yourself, you know, you're not improving yourself. You've seen that a lot of different times. And it's like, 
I just don't ever want to fall back into the trap of where I've been in the past where it's all about me because it's not, you know. Right. So, yeah. And that's where in the past it has been. I've been the marketer, shipper, content creator, promoter, hunter. You've been know? the solo guy, huh? Everything. <laughs> in the last three or four years, that's changed, you know, and, and, and uh, it's, I like it. I like it. Yeah, I, I still remember when I when I first started uh, hearing about you and you know getting to know who Tim Burnett was and um, Jordan, he because this was before Mountain Ops when we were uh, Zulu Six and we were doing marketing for a bunch of different different companies and Jordan had approached you about doing it and I asked him how it went you know because I liked what you were doing I was like man this this could be really fun working with Soul Honor mm -hmm. and Jordan says ah he's he's solo to the core he, he mm -hmm. wants to do it all himself and i was just like wow that's, <laughs> and that's i was ambitious. doing it all to myself up i'm to like that that's point. that's a yeah. lot of work yeah so I, I was i was impressed but i was like man yeah there, there, sleep <laughs> there's an easier way to <laughs> yeah what does snyder say sleep fast yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> sleep hard sleep fast whatever it is yeah it, it was a lot of work but it's it's a passion like i don't feel like i work a day in my in my life, really. Yeah. You know, when I was selling flooring and installing floors, I loved it. I loved everything about it. I just don't feel like I've ever had to just get up and go to work. Very yeah. small times in my life, but um, yeah, I feel the same. In fact, I have to, I have to, I have to pull back. Sometimes my wife um, has mentioned that I may be a workaholic. Yep, you probably are. But for me, you know, it's I love love what I do. So it's I have to I have to be careful to balance that time between work and family because I yeah. get so into you know, the, the marketing, the branding, the, the graphic design, the, the fine art, it's just, it's so, it's so much fun, you know, it's <laughs> like, yeah. wait a second, you know, it's, you know, you've been working since, since yeah. five this morning and it's almost eight, nine o'clock at night, you better go spend some time with right. your kids. So what are we doing now? What are we so excited about now that we're working on? Are we going to talk about that? Yeah, because this isn't going to, this is... This, this whole thing here, podcast, after show, whatever it might be, this is, this is what it's for. Mm -hmm. Without what we're creating or what we're, what we're organizing, I have no interest in a podcast. No yeah. interest in a, interviews, I mean, other than just going and hanging out with friends, you know. But because of this, like, it's brought a whole new level. Of, you think I've been excitable in the past. Like, this has brought a whole new level of excitement to me. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be cool. Solo Hunter All Access. Yep. Why don't you tell us a bit? You're... I've been talking the whole time. <laughs> it's, it's... Whatever. I gave my backstory from when I, I started when I was a little kid. And well, so <laughs> the, the whole tie to this is, is none of this is possible without you. I mean, I'll just tell you that right now. I could not do this by myself. I would be hi trying to hire Arnold to do the website and do these different things and and trying to manage different people and to put everything together and hunting at the same time because it's hunting season. I'll be hunting this afternoon, yeah. you know. It just wouldn't come into place. So without you, it's not happening. Yeah, it's, it's you know, it's funny how things work because, yeah, I'm, I'm a religious guy and God definitely works in mysterious ways. Um, you know, when I, I left Mountain Ops about, well, it's, it's been a year and a half ago, I think, and had you know, different ideas of what I wanted to do, different opportunities, and one thing just led to another, and it built on each other, and I had to, I had to learn even more new skills and, and push my, my limb, you know, my, my knowledge and, and do everything I could to expand and, and work hard and, and, you know, learn new things, and all those from a year and a half ago until now when we're starting this new, new program, the, if I hadn't had that time to learn the new things that I've learned, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't help you the way I'm, I'm able to. Right. So it's, it's cool to see how that all kind of takes place and takes well, shape. What's also kind of cool about that is, is this, this idea isn't new to me. Like, it's not new to anybody. I had this idea seven years ago. I remember in my office, I used to rent office space, and I have a business mentor that I meet with often. He came in and he's like, Tim, what is that? I had this huge whiteboard on one end of my office and it just had lines and drawings and solo nation mm. and this and that and all these different assets and different things. And he's just like, 
oh, you got to do that, you know? <laughs> I'm like, you know what that is? And he, he says, but it, what it was, is it was a solo nation. It was, mm-hmm. it was the all access. It was creating content, organizing that content in a way that people could participate, but also consume it. Um, and be able to monetize it in a way that you didn't have to have, you didn't have to have outside influences, Mm -hmm. whether it was investors or sponsors or constantly cramming product down people's throat. It was, no, you can create something that people want to be a part of and want to consume that isn't a selling platform. You know, you're not out there to sell your rifle covers. Your yeah. At that time, I just had the, the rifle covers and, and a hat, you know, or something like mm-hmm. that. He's like, you got to do this. But the timing wasn't right. You know, we didn't have the content. All of that content would have had to have been built and created. Yeah. Over the last seven years, we've been able to build that content and create it and fine tone our skills. And, and technology is And technology it. is there, right. So right. now we're going to create this all access platform. Some of you might have seen it already if you're watching this. Obviously, you're probably an all-access member unless we put it out there for free. Um, but we're creating this um, basically Solo Hunter Netflix. It's it's all things Solo Hunter between the episodes, archived episodes that have never been seen on TV, episodes that have never been on YouTube, um, and never will be. This interview process, the after show, all-access podcast, whatever you want to call it. Um, plans to add additional content whether it's on the educational side or whether it's just on the informational side probably more more, or more, more solo nation episodes, i would love like to involve more solo nation yeah um in all uh disclosure that's it's tough when you're dealing with i remember the first year that i um in the in season two i think it was when i put out the solo nation on the tv show hey we're looking for footage for solo nation I got 600 letters and with tapes and SD, and it was tapes at that time. <laughs> yeah. 600 That's and great. something. And I'm like in my office and I'm just like had this wall of stuff. And oh for God. one, I screwed what up because I, I told them I'd, I'd mail it back. So I was like, oh, this is not going to be, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I think I spent, I don't know how many thousands of dollars sending all that stuff back. You know, it was a lot of money um, and I was struggling. So. I, I didn't do things right, but I, but that's really at the point when I knew I was, that I wanted to involve others, you know, but at that point it was like, oh, this isn't going to happen. I can't do this. And we'll get stuff, you know, occasionally people want it, but I think now people know you don't just send your stuff in and get it on the TV show. That's not yeah. how it works. With the creation of this potentially and the growth of where we're going, I would love nothing more than to create a solo nation channel mm-hmm. of of the all access. Yeah, what, maybe um, what we need to do is have it by invitation. Uh, I've given a few people <laughs> invites. I just did a pod or a interview with Ryan Lampers. You know, yeah. we, we we did a his podcast, and I'm like, hey man, you want to film your hunt, solo hunt, or whatever? You get something awesome. I guarantee you that if it's if it's within anything at all, I will put yeah. it on the TV show. How's that? And then he didn't film that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of work to film it, right? Yeah. Oh, he gosh. may not have got that buck if he'd been filming it. Yeah, yeah. It's, there's odds that he wouldn't. So. Yeah. But now, but I think that's that's part of the excitement is, is it, it's not it can't it's not doesn't have to all be all about me and Remy and Boyd and whoever else is is doing the show. So um, I'm yeah. excited about it. <clears throat> what I, what I like about it is, it, like you said, it's not you're not with this all access program. You're not dependent on sponsors you're not dependent even on your product sales you're bu- you're building it for your audience and it's made possible by your audience mm-hmm. and i just think that's that's awesome and that's powerful and yeah so if they you know if they want to see it they'll come and see it if they want to see it they'll come and see it and yeah. uh it's not free you know i mean there will be some free content but nothing's free you know but and it's affordable would you rather me be constantly like New hats, new shirts, you know, me constantly barraging you with those types of things so that I could continue to make enough money that I need to make to do what I do. I don't, I don't want to play that game, you know. Right, or sponsor this, sponsor that. You know, sponsor here, this, sponsor Go buy this, go buy that. I have sponsors, great partners. Um, none of them this year. I mean, I, I've gotten, ri- gotten rid of or lost those that put demands on us. That were like, we need X number of posts, we need X number of seconds of product integration in the episodes they're gone yeah. every 
sponsor that we have with the TV show or individual um, sponsorship. So a little insight of how that works. Remy has, he's an ambassador for brands. He's sponsored by different companies. I'm an ambassador for brands sponsored by different companies. We have one or two that sponsor the TV show, us collectively. So with that, we've been able to maintain our individuality, but also we have very, most of our sponsors are the same. He has a few that I don't, I have a few that he doesn't. Um, but none of them put any demands or dictations on the content that we create. They're like, we're with, we're, we're associated with you because we like what you do. We, um, you know, appreciate your philosophy to hunting philosophy and the way you do things and the way you represent our products and our brands without the hard sell. So none of these advertisers, even though I might be wearing a prime t-shirt, they didn't say, Hey, we wear a prime t-shirt in my, in your interviews. Right. No, it's like I woke up this morning and put on my Prime T-shirt and then met with Joel and we do our interview. Um, well, Tim did ask me to wear this shirt. Though. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I did just bring you a handful of fresh new shirts, though. I wear them because I like them. Yeah. I, I mean, I think yeah. they're really cool designs. What's funny is I, I sent a bunch of shirts to James Bonham and he's not real big on social media anyway. He hates that stuff. He's more like me. He's like, ah, I don't want to deal with that. And I'm like... I'm like, dude, you'd never wear my shirts. He's like, I don't want to sweat in them, man. They're my favorite shirts. I don't want to sweat in them. So, yeah, I wear them out. Yeah, I go through shirts like crazy. But anyway, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited about that. So, yeah, it'll be good. Getting close, too, to having it, having it ready. Yeah. Well, I guess we've got a beta in place. Cool. I can't wait to see it. So we're going to go over that no, as part of got, this meeting. You've got a beta in place. I have a beta in Oh, yeah, I have a beta in place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's working. We have we have subscriptions. We have seen going out. And, uh, you know, so far so but good. But the full, the full program is yet to hit the, right. hit the public. Right. It's we just close. need to have more control over our content and, and create a better viewing experience than what we currently have with the yeah. beta program. And that's what Joel has been building and working on. And... and um, you know, we're getting close, getting close. You drew a tag here in Utah. I did. What did you get? I got a muzzle loader. And so, sorry about it. Joel asked me to bring him an extra camera, so. Yeah. <laughs> got my two good cameras here, and I got the crap backup camera in the bag of the truck that I'm gonna let you borrow. I'm excited. I, I, I gotta admit, I, I, I don't know that I've ever been hunting alone. I've hunted alone a lot, but actually gone hunting alone. Yeah. I've always hunted with my dad. Yeah. And that's I'm actually really excited about getting a muzzleloader tag. It's it's been a long time since I've had a muzzleloader tag, and that's how, like, it's, when I could start carrying a gun when I was a kid, that's what we did. I went and bought a, a kit and built my own muzzleloader, and mm. and it was the old side hammer, you know, traditional look, and that's what me and my dad did. We always went on the muzzleloader hunt. And it uh, it was fun. Unfortunately, he didn't. He put in this year, but he didn't draw oh, tags. Really? So, so now you're he's solo. Upset. So that yeah. So his so losses now. are gain. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm a solo hunter. <laughs> oh, you are in for something. Holy smokes! I'm excited to give it a, give it a shot. The camera Dude. stuff is going to be yeah it's my, a little intimidating. But. My recommendation is is if is if the cameras get frustrating, just turn them off. You yeah. Know? Put them in the bag. Enjoy your hunt. You know, I tell people that all the time. If, if the cameras are going to ruin your experience and make it not enjoyable, don't do it. Yeah. But everybody's like, what well, I want to do it. You know, I want to have the footage and everything. I'm like, well, you're either, That's what I was gonna say. You're going to frustrate the crap out of yourself <laughs> or you're going to be wildly successful. You know, who knows? Who yeah. knows? So there's not a trip that I go on that I'm not wildly frustrated. I'm just like, <laughs> I hate these cameras. I just want to hunt without cameras. I can imagine. But without them, I don't have anything. You know, I'm yeah, laying carpet. I mean, being in, in marketing, I've, you know, done a lot, of, a lot of photo shoots and then gone on different uh, outings or adventures where we're like, let's take the camera, you know, we can get good marketing material doing this. And if you're not, like, forcing yourself to get that camera out and mm -hmm. create that content, it's so easy to just leave it in the bag and go have fun. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you really have to have your... Uh... You really have to have it with you. Yeah. In the past, I've hired several different producers or cameramen to do different projects. We did Prime Pro TV and Off Grid and a couple other TV projects. And, and I had a couple guys that they just wanted to hang out. They just wanted to be part of the crew and yeah. just, you know, go to dinner with everybody and this and that. Yeah. And, and, 
You know, I had to, you had really have to sit back and say, look, I, I, I want you to enjoy yourself, but that's not what you're here for. You are here to do a job, you know. That's no different than me when I'm on a hunt. Mm -hmm. I have to set myself back and wipe the slobber off my chin and smiles and everything and slap myself <laughs> and say, look, dude, you're not here to enjoy the sunrise as much, you know. <laughs> Film yeah. it, enjoy it, but film it too, you know. Yeah, you're um, here to work. You got you to gotta make sure that... Yeah. Your your viewers get a chance to enjoy it as well. Yeah, I'll tell you what it doesn't. It never hits me as strongly as like it did this year, when I was in actually in Oklahoma. Easy whitetail, not easy, but just laid back, lazy whitetail hunt. Deer coming in, and I'm filming it all. And after it all went down, I realized I was like the lighting was perfect, phenomenal, and everything. But I got to watch that experience through a view through a square that big. Right. And um, eventually, I was able to watch it through a square <laughs> that big, you know. But I wanted to be able to watch it like this and to right. just experience it and feel it at all. I don't get that. And that's one thing that doing what I do, I don't get anymore. You're, getting, you're making that me sucks. really excited to do this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just want people to know the reality of it is, is like, all you ever get to see of what I do is on whatever size of screen you're watching it on, if I did a decent job of filming it. Right. I am out there experiencing it. I should have the ability to experience it, to feel it. And um, sometimes you don't, you know. Well, yeah, In I, order I mean, to bring it to the screen, it's a sac it really is. It's a sacrifice. I'm not whining and complaining, but it's a huge sacrifice to watch my experiences on a two by three screen. Well, that's just life now, isn't it? Everybody walking around with their cell phone, that's all they do is I they experience guess. life through that. Yeah, that watching the screen. fireworks through your cell phone. The like, eclipse, you know. <laughs> sometimes like, you can still be a solo hunter and not pack the camera and just go out and experience, you know, ultimately that's what I want. Yeah. Um, I can't do that on all my adventures, but so, sometimes you just want to go out there and just experience solo for what it is, you know. Yeah, and I've been caught up in, you know, the with cell phones and technology. I've been caught in that and, you know, videoing and taking pictures of everything. And sometimes it's just so refreshing to just put, put the phone away and enjoy yeah. it in, in real life, you know. Yeah. Wouldn't it be cool if there was some way that you could actually go out and... I guess there is in writing. Go out and do a solo experience and then write about it. Writing yeah. is just not as appealing to me as... You yeah. gotta look into those Google glasses or whatever. Oh yeah. <laughs> then then technology ruins it. No, but so this just that's just the re that's just a true feeling of what it is. Like if, if in a perfect world, if you want to experience solo hunting and solo, the, you know, do it yourself or independence, mm -hmm. you know, pure independence, pure self mastery, and just pure do it yourselfness. Go without the cameras. And do it. Right. Um, that's got to be so gratifying. It used to be. I used to love it. With the cameras now, I still love it, but it's not as gratifying. <laughs> well, we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll, I'll give it a shot, but maybe I'll end up shutting the cameras off and just enjoying it. <laughs> I didn't want to. I didn't want to talk you out of it. <laughs> yeah. How about you film this one and then you then you see what you want to do? Yeah, I'll I'll do it. I'll go for it. I think you should. Where are you staying? Are you staying at your sister's? In my tent. Oh, solo hunting, yeah. I'm solo hunting. You're not going to pull a Bear grills and <laughs> set up your tent and get some night footage and then, then pack it up and go to a hotel? Yeah, that's going to happen. You got to have a story. Oh, forget the story. Everybody's doing something. We'll do nothing. They say, what's your show about? I say nothing. There you go. It's about nothing. I think you may have something here. <laughs>